Hey gang, Scott here. Welcome to Impost and thanks for joining me. Today's video is a live edit, live in air quotes. I'm not live streaming. What I am doing is taking a photo from my library, one I've never worked on, and processing it from start to finish. So uh, if you've watched In the Field and In Post before, you know I've done these in the past. And so these are a little bit of like bending the format. Normally I'll show you something about the processing of a photo that I shared during In the Field. If you haven't watched In the Field, uh, you know check that one out. A good, uh, good outing to Dante's View in Death Valley National Park. After that outing, I captured this photo here, and it was uh, just driving up Daylight Pass, nice view of the valley. And as I was just capturing the photo, this you know, orange van drove through. I was like, ah, oh, perfect story. I want to capture it. So I'm excited to work on this photo and I'm just going to do it as a live edit. And what that means is I've done no processing at all. I click record and I start the work. And so there'll be thoughts and changes and mistakes and switchbacks and all that kind of stuff that happens when we do editing. And uh, you'll be along for the journey. So uh, with that, let's get into it. So a quick image assessment here. Certainly the van is the subject. The valley is my context. You know, so it's in situation. Uh, maybe a little cropping just to take a little bit off of the left edge. You know, this, this part here in the foreground, lower left corners, a little bit of dead space. And uh, I, I kind of like the color palette. It's it's somewhere, it's like soft yet cool. I want to keep that softness in the background. I like I like the mist. Maybe being able to bring out some of the the darker portions of the the, the mountains and the hills there, but but you know somewhere the balance between that mist and darkness. I do want more texture in the foreground. I want to make sure that this orange stays popped, and then maybe darken the road so that there is a very clear leading line. So that's a kind of the the mental process for where I want to go with the image. And uh, from here, it's just going to start working the tools. And so we'll, we'll do our, our very first things here. Let's, uh, let's zoom in, Q, A key, looking for dust spots. And let's just use the simple retouch brush. I see one right there. And I'm using the function keys on Mac. I think that's page up, page down on Windows, just to skim through the whole photo here in Lightroom. And most things look pretty good. Sensor's pretty clean there. I'm not going to find anything out in the in the desert itself, and we'll do one more one more sweep of that through. Uh, okay, this road sign's not really adding anything. Let's use Content Aware to get rid of that. So we'll take care of that. A couple little cones. Not like I have anything against cones. That last one didn't come out too well. It just they don't add anything to the story, and they just become these little tiny nits in the background. Okay, yeah, in the foreground here, this is actually a little bit soft too. So what did I shoot this at? F11, 180th of a second. So I'm handheld. I know I don't have the steadiest hands. So that's probably part of that story there. So, uh, but the but the, the subject itself, the car itself looks good. All right, don't see anything else particularly distracting. Great. Uh, let's get into our basics. So let's try landscape. That's that's richer, that's nicer than straight color. Yeah, landscape for sure. Now, white balance and auto, um, I think this is going to push things warmer. That tends to be what happens. Auto, that went warmer, but not much. Undo, 4,700, 5,200. You know, I, I almost always end up choosing something between as shot and auto. I mean, literally, like it, right in between. That just seems to be my taste. So I'm going to nudge that back to maybe, you know, in the neighborhood of 5,000. So I'm, I'm, I'm splitting the difference between the, the, the cool tone that the camera used and then the warmer tone that auto used. Speaking of auto, we will hit this and I'm expecting it to push it farther than what I like. Yeah, before and after. I'm losing some of the, 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 the haze. Let's see, before that, after. So what do we got here? The highlights are being pulled down. Let's let's raise those back up. Increase the blacks back up some. There's not that many pure blacks in the photo. It's like really the tires and underneath the car. Um, shadows, that's fine. And then the whites, that's fine too. Exposure got lowered. That's interesting. 
I'll fiddle around with that a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so just really quick here, you know, before we started, after. All right, keeping some of that uh, that haziness, but it already brought out some of the, the darker bits here in the, in the mountains. Let's do a crop now. Um, double L key in Lightroom. I like to work without any distractions on the crop. And making sure that we have our van roughly on a third. And then this is this is the part that's just dead space. Let's try a um, a different ratio, 16 by 9. That might that might fare better. Actually, it might fare worse because I'm ending up having to pull in more of that left side. Hmm. Let's see. It's actually pretty cool. Let me check that against. Uh, the as shot ratio, not the as shot, sorry, the original, which would be a two by three. Two by three is tightening in on it. I think I'll stick with the 16 by nine. I seem to be like really overthinking this. Um, but I do want to have, no, you know what? I'm, I'm going back again. Reason for two by three, and here's the thinking is I want this um, this van to be traveling and driving off into this very expansive area. That's the story. And so I don't want to have uh, the 16 by 9 because I'm going to lose some of this upper sky. Also, if I were to end up using this for you know, the thing like, you know, magazines, newsletters, cover of books, something like that, this particular crop gives plenty of space for text. So if you're going to put some text on a photo, that's something to think about too. And then maybe just nudge this over kind of, um, let's, let's, uh, let's cycle through. Where was that golden spiral? I'm hitting the O key and Lightroom and now shift O. Yeah, we're pretty close on the on the spiral for the the, the third there. Um, I tend to like the the triangle layout, which is this one. It, it's a good approximation. It's just uh, quick quick enough for me to, to get a feel for how things are going. All right, so that was a lot of time in crop. <laughs> I think we're looking good. Now, a couple other things I said when I was doing the image assessment was uh, getting a little more pop on the orange of the van, darkening the road texture in the foreground and uh, I haven't done anything with the texture clarity sliders and so forth I'm gonna hold off on that my I, my, my favorite for uh, for adding punch is, is dynamic contrast so I'll probably bring this through on one effects uh, before finishing it but let's do a couple of other things let's um let's uh, let's go ahead and um, we probably could get away with HSL where you know grab saturation put it on the orange and push and it's not going to really have too much impact elsewhere, but it, it but it will just because there is some orange here. So instead, let's put uh, let's put the object selection in Adobe to uh, to work here, and just pick that car. It'll 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 nail. That's a, that's an obvious one to do. And then saturation, we can just push the saturation up. I'll push it up. Uh, let me turn off fine adjustment. Push up really far. You know you can see it's really going to push those oranges. And let's let's get healthy on it. Something like something like that. Uh, and also we can slightly nudge up the shadows. Again, pushing it really far to see it pop, but just a little bit because as uh, as this photo takes shape, there'll be you know some type of vignetting to focus attention to the van. We want that to be a little brighter. It's almost like adding in an inner light. Um, so that was the car, and I tend to like to name my masks. Also, I said the road. I want to darken the road. Let's also try to put uh, object selection to work here. And this time I'll use the brush mode. And uh, let's see, smaller brush. And if I kind of just skirt around here and bring it around like that, let's see how we do. Pretty good. We'll add in another object. This time it'll be kind of that road out in the middle. Good. And there was one more segment of road here, kind of through here. Let me turn off the overlay so I'm sure I can see it. Yeah, through here. That's going to be worthy of darkening. 
because I want that road to be consistent. So we'll add a third object. And all we're doing right now is kind of staging the mask. Let me turn the mask back on. Pretty good. One more. I haven't done any adjustments yet. We're just kind of getting, getting things ready. That one it couldn't find, so we're going to do brushing at that point. So brush, turn off the overlay, and just kind of add a little bit of a, a brush stroke through there, there too. I know we can't see that right now, but that's what I added on. All right, zooming back out. Uh, we got a little more cleanup to do. We'll get underneath the van with the brush. Right there, we can kind of see a little bit of where the uh, the object selection was good, but not perfect. Okay, and finally, we can take our exposure and start to bring that down. You can see I bring it down really far. You can see what's going on, and, and actually bringing it down super far kind of gives you a an idea of you know where where are things hitting, where are things missing. But uh, like like this part of the curve here. Is a little soft and this edging is a little a little off but for a small nudge and then maybe taking shadows maybe taking the black point down a little bit just enough so that before that change after that change you know there is now a very very clear line that we're following going through this scene here and now that I'm looking at that all together I might nudge that exposure back up a little bit. I want to accentuate, but I don't want to overdo it. And here maybe we'll add in some clarity. Let me push it hard. Like that's that's really strong. Maybe like that. So we're we're doing a clarity pop on the road. I'm happy with that. So we'll call that the road. Great. I think I'll do one more change in Lightroom before moving this over into on one effects for some finishing touches. And that's to the sky to add a little more warmth. There is, you know, there is I'm playing up with this this warm cool thing, right? We look at the photo here and there's certainly warmth in the foreground. The sand, the desert, those you know, those oranges there. We've got the cool in in the mountains and the mist. And there's like a little hints of warmth up in the sky here like to see about playing that up. I'll do that with another mask, linear gradient, and you know, just kind of feather one out here. And I might be, you know, maybe tempted to, to grab warmth, but uh, I'm going to play with that, see how that's doing. Not bad, but I'm also thinking about the orange of the van. And instead of using, uh, you know, temperature, adding a slight tint, so you can you know, push it really hard. You can see what's going on there. But, you know, just adding a, a bit of a tint that, that it plays with the, the orange in the foreground. Let's see if that's beneficial before and after. This is a subtle change. Wow. Um, if you've watched my videos, you know this is like a, a, a curse of mine with, with YouTube. I do these subtle changes, and sometimes they don't translate through on the video. Uh, but um, to, uh, to, to drive it home, like if I were to take that saturation point, I'm pushing that really hard. You can see what I'm doing. I'm tinting that sky. You know, that's 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 just too much for my tastes, of course. I'm that subtle guy, uh, so we'll we'll temper that back down. But there there is a slight change. Uh, if that doesn't translate to the the video, it will translate to the final photo. So we'll tint the sky. That's great. Done with masking, and from here, uh, looking at the scene, it feels like the foreground's a little dark. I'll improve that as I get into to effects since I'm going in there anyway. And uh, I want to add that texture in the foreground. And that's mainly the reason I want to go into effects. Dynamic contrast, it's a go-to tool for me. So uh, let me get this over into on one effects. Now my typical workflow is I actually bounce this through Photoshop. And primarily the reason for that is not that I'm going to use Photoshop to do stuff. Uh, it helps uh, reduce image sprawl for me in my library because there are photos where I will use several plugins. I don't think this will be one of them. This photo is pretty pretty good out of out of the camera. I just need to do you know like I'm doing now Lightroom and effects. But if I go through multiple filters or uh, multiple uh, plugins, 
then I don't have to go back to Lightroom each time. I end up with, you know, a series of, you know, edit one, edit two, edit three. You know, I land in Photoshop like this. It's a smart object. Great. I just go filter and then I can choose all of my different plugins. And so from here, I'll take it into effects. And if I were to then move this into another plugin, it's all a single TIFF file. So that's the logic here. There's no, uh, there's no other like, you know, secret sauce going on here. It's just bouncing through an intermediary. Okay, in effects, uh, definitely want to get into dynamic contrast, and that's going to make an immediate pop on the foreground before and after. Actually, it's, I thought I was going to need to do some masking here to, to temper it and limit it to the foreground, but the, the filter's smart. The filter's smart. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little increase. Let's zoom in on these mountains. I'm getting this little increase in the mountains, but in a nice natural way that the, the haze is still there. The, the layering is still there. You know, the, the color on the van and, and the hills is nice. I mean, this is, this is just wonderful. I, I don't need to do any masking there. I thought I was going to need to. Um, the other thing, let's do that one before and after and before and after. Uh, I still feel like I want the foreground to be slightly brighter. Now, let me switch over to locals and let me pre-stage here. Uh, let's just, you know, let's kind of do like a classic dodge, you know, point two, point three, and gradient here just to feather that out. So we're, we're adding some exposure in the foreground and perhaps I can protect in the gear menu, I can protect the shadows. So we'll see that it's a, it was a subtle touch. If I protect the mid-tones, you'll see even less of that brightening, right? So what the protection sliders are, it's, it's kind of a quicker way of dealing with, say, a luminosity mask. I could do a luminosity mask and then use the gradient on that. But when I just want to protect really like, you know, the really deep shadows, the sliders are easier to use. So I'm going to use them. Last bit, we'll do uh, our vignette, classic vignette. I always love vignettes. And I do really like the ones in uh, in on one. Um, I'll start with big softy, which tends to be strong. But the way I work with vignettes, I take the feather down to zero. I'll start playing around with the uh, roundness and shape. I tend to like things a little rounder than like the uh, kind of the letterboxing thing because I'm actually actually me. I'm accentuating a subject. We'll use this little crosshair and bring this down here because this is where I want you to see. And when I feather this back out, it's going to feather in both directions, right? Like that. And then um, I can either take back some of that darkness or work the opacity or both. We have lots of controls here to deal with this. But in the end, before and after. Let's do a quick recap of, uh, you know, see the, the major progression changes here. So uh, this is the uh, original photo uh, right out of camera. You know, the cropping is done here. And then in Lightroom made these changes. So the basics, the auto stuff, uh, darkening the road, a little orange pop on the van and a tiny bit of tinting to the sky and then brought it into effects to get a little more detail. That dynamic contrast really does add something there. It, uh, it is, it is a magic filter as well as a nice vignette. And you know, um, this is where I always kind of stop and well, I'll let this photo sit with me for a couple of days. I may go back to it and tweak and play with things. You know, your, your mood always changes. You'll notice things a couple of days later when you've got a set of fresh eyes on it. But now, you know, for this one, I'm, I'm happy with the photo. I'm going to call it done. And uh, thanks for uh, for joining me on this uh, this live edit. This is a little journey through uh, my, my photo process. Hope you found it uh, useful. Uh, infotainment hopefully you got something out of it as well as uh you know enjoyed the journey if you got questions go ahead and drop them below and until next time my name is scott davenport have fun